have a great day to one in this video uh, we can discuss about the activation function the types and uh, with the example we can see today the activation function is an essential component in a deep learning model it helps to determine the output accuracy and the complexity involved in a model and its efficiency can also be calculated with the help of the activation function it also plays a major role in the convergence speed so it uh, helps to prevent the neural network to convergence happen at the initial stage itself with the mathematical functions we can able to determine the neural networks output here the activation function helps to find out whether the particular neuron should be activated or not and based on the neurons input it helps to normalize the output of the neuron and makes them in the range either in between uh, 1 and 0 or minus 1 to 1 so this is one example for artificial neural network or a non deep feed forward network one input layer hidden layer and the output layer here you can see this this is an example for a deep neural network model here we are having multiple hidden layers here we are having three hidden layers a input layer and a output layer so this is how it's working we are providing the input so this is the neuron we are providing with any particular type of activation function either sigma tan h then it produces the respective output so without having the activation function it doesn't activate and uh, can't able to hold that input data for a long time process carried out by the neuron inside the network so it takes the input and multiply that input with the weight of the neuron then we are adding the bias value feed forward that result to the activation function then it transforms the output to the next layer of neurons three types of activation function one is binary step linear activation and non linear activation function this is the first type the binary step activation it is a thresholding based method so if the incoming input is above the threshold means automatically it takes the input or else it rejects the input and make it a zero it does not allow uh, multiple value outputs it cannot able to uh, support classifying the inputs into one or more categories this type is linear activation function here based on the input the output varies in a linear manner so here the input are multiplied with the weights and output signal is created that should be proportional to the input here the main problem with this linear activation model is that it is not possible to use back propagation method as the function is a constant we can't able to relate them with the input x and all the neural network can be collapsed into a single output layer so nowadays this model neural network use this type of non linear activation function it helps to solve the complex data sets it deals with a large amount of image data sets video audio where they are having a high amount of non linearity and high dimensionality problems with this non linear activation function they allow back propagation but the derivative function that must be related to the inputs they allow stacking of the multiple layers that creates the deep neural network that helps to learn with the complex data set some common classifications in non linear activation function sigmoid or otherwise is called as logistics then tan h other name is hyperbolic tangent and rectified linear unit leaky rectified linear unit parametric rectified linear unit softmax and the swiss activation function some graphical representations of the activation functions this is sigmoid and this is tan h and this is a rectified linear unit and leaky rectified linear unit so the first thing is the sigmoid activation function it is represented by pi of z that is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus z it is a function that we obtain during training the model here it's mainly used in the machine learning concept especially in testing the ann that helps to understand the output of neuron pros and cons performance of the binary classification is very well when compared to other activation methods but the calculations here is very complex and also this method doesn't help in multi class classifications it provides the output value as zero when we obtained a non positive or a negative value and for high positive values it produces the output as one and the next one is hypertangent activation function here it is a clearly defined ratio between the hyperbolic sine and cosine functions the pros and cons are it is stronger for a tan h rather than that sigmoid functions and also the output is one and the whole function is a zero centric one it is having a vanishing gradient problem third one is a rectified 
linear unit activation it takes the maximum value first see the advantages when the input is positive means then there is no gradient saturation problem but when the input is negative means automatically this becomes inactive and the calculation speed is much more faster and it has only a linear relationship function in between them it's work well in both forward and backward propagation and it is faster than the sigmoid and tan h functions but when the output is either zero or a positive number it means this this function is a not a zero centric function so softmax function it is a very important activation function so here it calculates the probability distributors on the event over n different layers x that belongs to the class 1 then class 2 and this is class 3 so this is that predicted output so here the z1 that represents the weight with that input layer plus the bias it must be provided with that softmax activation function then we can predict the output with the cross entropy value how the calculation is working on here in the numerator we are provided with that uh, e of z i value and this is the summation of the j equal to 1 into k that remains the total number of values the probabilities are found based on this activation function the final one is that swiss function it was inspired with the use of sigmoid functions we can see that for getting the long short term memory functions and uh, highway networks it increases the accuracy over that uh, RELV method and it outperforms in every batch size but computationally it is very expensive one also while designing the algorithm it can provide some more problems that increases more or more complexity some common activation function mainly they used uh, are with that sigma tan h value so now we can see one example with the sigma activation function with a binary sigmoid and bipolar sigmoid. Here we are going to solve that sigmoid activation function by using binary sigmoid and bipolar sigmoid activation functions. We are provided with three inputs x1, x2, x3 and the output y. 3.6.4 are the inputs and for bias the weight is given by 0.35. The weights are given by 0.1, 0.3 and minus 0.2. The binary sigmoid activation function is given by y equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus y i n and then apply this activation function bipolar sigmoid activation function y equal to 2 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus y i n minus 1 so it is expanded and written as b plus x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus x3 w3 to product the inputs with their respective weights and then add the bias value final answer 0.53 so we have written the formula 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus y in substitute the value y in that we can get the output as 0.625 this is for binary sigmoid activation function similarly for bipolar sigmoid activation function the formula is given by 2 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus y i in so we will substitute that y i in will get 0 0.259 this is for sigmoid activation function for binary and bipolar Thank you for watching the video. Meet you in the next video. Till then, it's goodbye from Vijay.